Good morning, chat. You click the title. You know what's going on. Let's speed run. Okay, so first things first, let's actually figure out what's happening inside a noodle extensions map and what's making everything do this stuff. So if we hop into here, we have the map I was just looking at and then the expert plus standard file. Inside this is like all the code that tells the game like, hey, this is a note placed here in this direction and this color. You'll see all of those at the top here, underscore color notes. You got like your beat, your X position, your Y position. So like horizontal, vertical, your A for the angle offset, C for color and D for the cut direction. And then there's this guy here, the custom data. This isn't something that is added in normally by the base game. This is like a very much custom thing that is used by a mod called custom JSON data. And that allows you to write custom JSON data. So if we go down a little bit more, what do we have? Okay, so getting into a more custom note, we have a bunch of noodle extension stuff. First thing is a track. A track is just a way of like grouping and organizing notes. It just gives it a name. And then later on, you can call in a event that says, hey, anything with this name, do this to it. So it's just a way of grouping things. We have disabled note, note gravity, which is like the jump animation, the spawn effect, which is that little light that blinks when a note spawns in your note jump start beat offset. This is the offset or the JD of the note, as most people know it as uh, your note jump movement speed. That's your NJS. And then there's other arrays here like animation. When you open up a new animation like group thing, you have a bunch of other properties like offset position, dissolve, dissolve arrow, a bunch of other stuff that you will see in the documentation that you should definitely go read in the description down below. So I'm not going to talk too much about these animation properties right now, just because it's a little bit advanced. But for context, anything applied directly to a note is called a path animation. The other thing that you have is called a track animation, but that's for another video later on. What we have here is three different things. Offset position has your X, your Y and your Z. So this is your horizontal, your vertical, and then your forward and backward axis. This last digit here is the important one. This is the time for every animation. It will have a time from zero to one, zero being the start of whatever the thing is and one being the end of the thing is. In the context of a path animation, which is what an animation applied directly to a note is, the time is zero when the note first jumps up. 0 0.25 is going to be the half jump of the note. 0 0.5 is exactly when the note is cut and everything past 0 0.5 is counted as a miss. So 0 0.50001 miss. Typically, if you're doing animations and stuff, you want these to end around like 0 0.375, 0 0.4, something like that. And if you have like some kind of like animation where it slows and speeds up and then slows down again, like a speed ramp or an easing kind of deal, you want that to happen around the half jump mark. So 0 0.25. Try and use values like those as much as possible if you're animating things at least in regards to time like try and stick to you know a 0 0.125 0 0.25 375 etc etc it just makes it sync up with the bpm a lot better and it just leads to a more satisfying looking animation it looks a lot less scuffed um that's the only thing to really note about that so this may seem a little confusing i know but don't worry, we're not doing this right now. We're hopping directly into Chrome Mapper, which makes things a lot easier. Hopping into your map, the first thing that I want everybody to do is to just hit Shift, Alt, and period on your keyboard. What this will do is it'll convert the map from a V2 map to a V3 map. In terms of noodle extensions, V2 is supported, but not every new feature is added into it. So there's a lot of stuff missing, like disable bad cut isn't a thing. There's a lot of weird like track parenting stuff that doesn't work. A lot of environment stuff doesn't work. It's just a good idea to, you know, move on with the times, move on to V3. You don't have to place arcs. You don't have to place chains. You don't need to do the fan. You don't have to do that. You can, you can just have the background format look the exact same and it's going to be fine. I know there's a lot of people that hate arcs and chains. It's not that bad. Just trust me on this. Just, just, just work with me. I've, al I've already converted this map to V3. I'm not about to convert it back, so I'm going to hit cancel. Anyway, moving on. Second thing you want to do is go and adjust a couple settings just to make your life significantly easier for everything. You're going to press escape, go into options. First thing to do, go to mapping, precision uh, placement mode. This is going to be on hold by default. 
that will hurt your hand. It will cramp up real quick. I would change that to toggle so that when you go and you press the Q button, it just, you know, stays like this. You don't have to actually go and hold down Q to place a note and then like while you try and rotate things, you got to like hold down Alt and like a bunch of other. It, that sucks. First things first, do do that. Second thing is you're going to search node editor and you are going to make sure that this is on and you know what the key bind is by default. It's just N and uh, I adjust the size so it's a little bit bigger and the text size a little bit smaller and also, you know, make sure it's enabled and works in the first place. That's a good thing to do. So what does that do when you click a note and you press N? Remember all, all that data that I was showing you here? It shows it here so you can directly edit it and do all the things you want. Now I know what you're thinking. Wait, you're going to make me type all of that. I thought you said this was easy. Ha ha. It is. You don't have to type all that. What else are you going to do? You're going to head over to discord, go into the Chrome mapper discord, click on the plugins thing, and you're going to see all these plugins here. The main one we're looking at is one called prop edit and another one called selector, which I'm sure is somewhere in, in here. You're going to go, you're going to click on these. You're going to go to the stuff. It'll take you to the releases page. You grab the DLL. I don't think you need the PDP or the, the PDB or whatever the frig it's called. Just grab the DLL file. Take this. You download it. You go to wherever your Chrome Mapper folder is. And then you put it in the plugins folder and you save it here. And that's all you got to do. It's great. I already did that. So I don't need to replace it. Super simple. Now, back in Chrome Mapper, once you have installed those plugins and have restarted and you are back into your level, you are going to hit the tab button, the tab button. You're going to, you're going to close the node editor and then hit the tab button. And then on the side, you'll see a couple new things. First one is selector. Selector is huge because it, you know, helps you select things, which you're going to do a lot of. So if you want to select every single note, you press it, it selects every single note. If you want to deselect every single note, deselects every single note. This is great because if you just want to like select arcs, for example, you can select this whole thing and then just, you know, deselect all of the notes, leaving only the arc selected. That way you bring up the thing. You have only the data for those arcs that are there. Makes it a lot easier to work with. And now the very important plugin that actually makes shit stupid simple. Prop edit. You grab this, you select something and it gives you anything you could possibly do with Noodle. Right here, chroma, if you want to change your color, disable the spawn effect, turn off the debris, you can do that. You want to change what beat it's on, you can do that. Your X, Y, Y position, you, just right there. Just type in one, it moves the note down. You type in two, it moves it up to spot two. You want to change the offset 15 degrees, you change the offset 15. It's incredible stuff. Go down here into noodle extensions, and there. this is where all the fun stuff happens. Let's make this a little bit bigger by dragging down here. You can see a little bit more. So the cool plugin you actually probably care about the most is prop edit. This guy here is incredible. It's basically the cheat sheet for anything you can do with noodle extensions in Chroma, at least as far as the basics go. You go, you select your note and you have a bunch of options here. You can change the beat it's on its X position. It's Y position. If you want this in lane three, you can press three and then, and then off it goes all the way to the other side. It's crazy stuff. This works with everything. The angle offset, if you want to rotate it 15 degrees, 15 degrees, easy rotation, problem solved, blah, blah, blah. Color, you can change the color of a note. So if I want this all black, I can do the red value of zero, blue value of zero, green value of zero, and then it's alpha of zero. So RGB, A, all zero, hit it. We now have a blacked out note. And it'll auto fill in the actual color codes and everything else. Uh, I'm pretty sure you can paste in just color codes from the web and stuff too. If you use like a color picture and you're trying to like match it from the album art, you can do all of that. Really great stuff. You can also change uh, your NJS. This is all per note. It's not for the whole map. So only this object that is selected, this is all that applies. You can change your NJS, your spawn offset or JD, uh, your coordinates, which is basically like the base game X and Y system, but a lot more precise instead of it just being a integer value. So like a whole number of like zero, one, two, three, you can do everything in between. So like 1.1 or like 3.5 or all the way off at 10. Uh, another difference about it is that it doesn't have zero in the bottom corner and starts from zero here. So this would be zero. This would be one. This would be negative one. This would be negative two. So if I type in coordinates, uh, what negative two on the X and then one on the Y, that'll put it in the same spot. If I do 
positive two on the X, it'll shift it all the way over off of the grid. Cool, cool, right? Delete that, gone. Uh, rotation, this isn't like the rotation you just saw before, like the angle offset. This is literally 360 rotation. By default, it's only, you know, side to side. So if I do negative 12, for example, and then switch over into the preview mode, you will see that this note now just comes in from the side. Really cool, right? Now, other stuff you can do with it is other angles. If you make this an array, you have your X, Y, and Z, or your uh, pitch, yaw, and roll, if you're used to you know aviation stuff. So we uh, pitch would be if we do negative 15, and then the yaw is side to side. So we'll just leave that at zero for now. And then the roll will also leave at zero, just to give an example. Now that we have the three values in there, when we switch to the preview, you can see that the node is now coming up from the top. Pretty cool stuff. When you're doing things with rotation, it is a very good idea to have your spawn offset like a, probably double of what you usually have. So if you usually like the rest of the map is 0 0.25 or something, then this one should add on to that and be 0 0.5. That way you have just a bit more time to react. You can see it out of your peripheral vision. You just the player knows what's going on and they're not jump scared by a note coming from the side of them and just like hitting them with a left hook. That's never fun. So another thing we have is fake and uninteractable. These kind of go hand in hand. A fake note will mean that it doesn't affect scoring or combo. And a uninteractable note means that you cannot interact with it. You cannot cut it. You cannot do anything. If you're making an uninteractable note, you almost always want it to be fake. Unless you are just trying to be a dick and just like you want somebody to fail a song and constantly miss a note because they just literally cannot cut it. I guess you could do that. Kind of cringe, but whatever. Uh, disable note gravity. That is the note jump animation. So like if you watch notes spawn in the base game, they'll be all the way in the back of the highway on the floor. And then as they come up, they'll like, like, like come in and then hop up into the spot that they're supposed to be. So they come in all along the bottom and then whoop, and then they'll like rotate and flip into the actual like position they're supposed to cut them in. That's what that is, no gravity. This is really cool, uh, but it can also create a lot of new vision blocks that you didn't have before. So if you have like these two notes here with gravity disabled, you are not going to see this note in the back jump up from the bottom row. It's just going to appear in the top row. So an inline like this is now just a vision block. So something else to watch for when doing that. This could also lead to some cool things because now this isn't a vision block. You have this guy in this row here, but because this isn't jumping, because this isn't spawning on the bottom row and it's always on the top, you can just see it the entire time. So it can lead to some creative pattern ideas that previously weren't possible. Um, definitely something worth playing around with and trying out. Uh, definitely something I need to experiment with more. So next thing we have is the disable note look. And what this does is like a weirdly specific mechanic in the game where as the note approaches the player, it will always look at the player to help with like ac accuracy and stuff. To visualize this, let's change its local rotation. So we'll do zero uh, on the pitch. So it's not tilting up or down, um, but it will do negative 20 degrees on the yaw, which is the side to side, and then zero degrees on the Z axis. So when we go and look at this in the preview mode, it is now facing towards the player. This is like that kind of mechanic. Imagine this, but animated. It goes looking straight. And then as it comes towards the player, it's looking at them. Disable look disables that it, it keeps notes always looking straight. This is usually for like if you're doing a fake note or like a visual note and you just want to have some cool art thing with it and you don't want it to always be staring the player down. You do that. Uh, no bad cut direction, no bad cut speed and no bad cut color are pretty self-explanatory. Um, it just means that if you swing the note and like say if you have direction on, if you swing the note in the opposite direction, it'll just go right through the note. It will ignore it completely and it'll go th go through. So a fun way to cheese this is just if you wiggle really fast, eventually you'll cut it in the right direction and it'll work. Uh, no bad cut color means that like no matter what, if you have like the blue saber swinging anywhere through this note, it's not going to bad cut. It's just going to fly right on through. This doesn't mean that you'll never miss the note because obviously if you cut it with the wrong saber and it just cuts through it and nothing happens, 
it's still going to count as a miss because you didn't hit it with the right saber, right? Okay. The next thing we have is flip, which is remember that jump animation I was I was talking about how the note like comes in on that bottom row and then eventually it comes up and then like hops up into the spot it's it's supposed to be. There's a fun mechanic in the game where like if you have uh, down here and this is blue and then you have a red here, they're going to jump up and they're going to be normal. However, if these are flipped, they're going to spawn in all the way in the back in the right direction. And then when they go and do their like jump into their spot, they're actually going to swap places and land where you actually place them. What flip does is do this to anything from anywhere. So like if we have this note up here in this top corner and we wanted it to jump up from here, we'd have to use the same coordinate system. So we want this to jump up from X one and Y zero. And that would make this note spawn in here all the way at the back and then jump up and flip into there, which I think is pretty cool that it's it, another cool thing to help with with vision blocks because you can have like a pattern like this, like a whole inline thing like there and then this guy and then sure that guy. And then this guy, you can make it jump up from down down here into there. So you'll see this note spawn. It'll jump up and land. And then this one could spawn here, then jump up there. And you'll kind of see them all jump in. And you can still read the arrows and you can read the notes. And really cool mechanic, really fun to play with. And also really trippy uh, if you're not expecting it. Link is a thing that's currently broken, but should be fixed soon. I'll update the description or add a comment to the bottom of the, of the video when this is ready. But what link does is just link one note to another note. So if you would put in a random name like uh, note one, and then this guy over here, you would also add in the same link of note one. So what that does is when this note is cut, that note over here, that, that blue one is also cut in the exact same way. It just links the notes together. Uh, again, currently broken. I'll update this, the description when that works and it's actually, you know, doing stuff. Uh, track is that grouping thing I was talking about before. It's basically a string or an ID that you put in. So again, we can call it note, note one. And then this one, we can call it uh, also note one. And then when you go and make a new, you know, like animate track event or something else over there, uh, which is a more advanced thing we're not going to get into now, but that's an animation thing. It'll basically do the same animation to both of these notes, but with one event. It's, it's a great way of grouping things. Heading into here, you click the animation button, and this brings up all the animation stuff you can do. So this is if you want to do things like ghost notes, um, invisible, whatever. If you want the note to grow or shrink or anything else, really, you do that. Uh, as I was talking about before, it works in the same system as the timing and whatnot. But the only difference with this is instead of having to enter all the info here, you have to enter it in that node editor, which I was talking about before. So for example, if I want to add in a dissolve, which will make a ghost block, you can hop in here and you can see it added in a preset. You don't have to remember anything. It just kind of does it. So this is when the note first spawns in. And this is what just before the player is going to cut the note. If I set this to zero and then switch over into uh, preview mode, you will see that the note, can I deselect that? Yeah, it comes in, it's fully spawned in. You can see it, it's fully opaque. And then as it comes in, it starts to dissolve. And now it's just an arrow right before the player cuts it. Obviously you can do this in any other way. So if I wanted to hop in and then switch this from zero to one, I can do that as well. So then we have like the note spawning in invisible. You can't really see it. It's just the arrow. And then it appears you can do that too. And you can also add in your own custom values and stuff. So you add in another array or a bracket here by putting in a comma, enter, and then you have a new thing. So we'll set this to 0 0.25 and then this one to 0 0.5. We'll start it fully shown, make it fully invisible by changing the dissolve value to zero at 0 0.25 halfway through the notes life and then back up to one fully visible at halfway through or yeah i guess this is a quarter way through the notes life and this is halfway through the notes life right when you cut it so what does that look like hop into preview mode we go back our note spawns in fully visible we see it it goes fully invisible and then starts to come right back pretty simple stuff uh, I guess the only other thing that you could possibly do with this is add in a easing to it. 
So there's a whole link for that. Uh, I'll put that in the description. It has a list of all of the easings, what they look like, cool graphical animation stuff. But for example, we'll do ease in out bounce or yeah, bounce works. It's just a extra thing you add in after the time with a comma and no comma at the end of it. It has to be in quotations. We close that and then we go and look at it and then we have, oh shit, I actually need the note. And then we have this note spawn invisible, we'll go invisible and then come back. But it comes back like fully and then starts to bounce. So it goes a little bit invisible, then fully and then a little bit invisible and then it kind of does that. Chrome Mapper's visualization of it isn't the best, but you get the idea of what it do, especially once you go to the website and you look at the animations and stuff. But yeah, that is how easy it is to do stuff in Chrome Mapper. You can just select a bunch of notes and say, hey, I want all of these guys to come in from the ceiling. You can just do that, just like 20, come in from 20 degrees up, up, up top, the rest of them keep the same, so put them at zero. And then uh, bada boom, bada bing, I, uh, that is not the top, but you get the idea. You'll figure these things out as you go. Thank you for coming to my TED talk. Goodbye, chat. Okay, editing Monty, coming back in here. Uh, I, I missed uh, a really important thing that I think everybody should know that will speed up your workflow tremendously. First thing you wanna do, hop into here. You're gonna add in uh, a bunch of these things, um, but the main ones you're looking for is minus minus verbose and FPFC for first person free camera. Uh, add those into your launch options by you know going in here, right clicking properties, add it there. And while you're in here, you're going to go to installed files, browse, and this will bring up the game folder with all of your game stuff. Go into user data and there is uh, Chroma. There are a couple things you want to check here. If you're doing uh, environment enhancement stuff, you can print environment enhancement debug, uh, which is this guy here. Turn that on and then in your going back in your log file, in your latest dot log, you will see a bunch of things for environment stuff. So if you're looking up the regex stuff for that, you'll see it there. Super helpful. Um, and otherwise, this is just the standard Chroma settings that you see in the menu. And then the other important thing that you want to do is go into the Sierra util config, which is this guy here. It's just that same folder, comment, beat saber, user data, Sierra util. Inside this, there are a bunch of options here. Lock view on disable, you want to set to true. Song control, restart code here. Exit code, escape. Pause toggle key code, F2. All of this, uh, you just want to set it to what I have here, essentially. So what this does is it allows you to use the game in desktop mode with a mouse and keyboard and fly around so you can visualize and see how things work without having to put your headset on and test things. And what that other command that we entered in called Aero Luna is the best modder, what that does is it allows you to rewind, fast forward, and reload a level live while you're in the middle of it, or any level that has a chroma or noodle requirement on it. So if we hop into uh, one of my old whips disaster, I see it has the chroma and noodle extensions requirement. You can click on practice mode, hop into it, do the stuff, and then once you are in, you can press F2 to pause the level, F2 to start it up again, F4 will restart the level, but that restart will not refresh the level. If you want to re refresh the level, you can go, th uh, go through, you can pick a point by pressing the right or left arrow keys to fast forward and rewind through. If you make a change and you want to see that change happen live without having to back out, refresh, go back in and do everything. You can just press control and that will set a point. And then when you press the space key, it'll reload the entire level changes and everything from that point that you just set. So if I want to go back to the start and say, oh, this arc flashing looks kind of weird. Let me try and work on that and see what happens here. Go back a little bit more to where it happens. Set your point as the intro and outro. And then you can make a change to it and just keep refreshing and just see how the changes work out. It's an extremely useful feature, uh, like possibly the best thing that has been added into Noodle entirely. Um, the only downside to it is that it doesn't fully refresh the song. So as soon as you back out, 
it's going to be like that first version you just opened. You're still going to have to go into here and press R to reload the song and then actually have those changes take effect. If you were to not press R and go back in, it would be just like the first version you had when you last opened the map. But yeah, that is the last thing. Really cool thing. Really important thing. Uh, have fun making cool maps. Please challenge community. I want to see you guys do some cool stuff with this. I know you guys are getting bored with your regular vanilla patterns. I can see you guys doing some really quirky stuff with this. Please, please have fun with it.